So here's what you don't know about Cadet Kelly. There was a lot of behind the scenes stuff and I'm going to get into it. Cadet Kelly was a decom that I'm sure if you've clicked on this video, you have seen it. It was one of the most popular decoms of all time dethroned by High School Musical. It was starring myself and Hilary Duff. I was really nervous that Hillary wouldn't like me. I didn't know what to expect and I wanted to make sure that we got along. Sometimes there can be pressure for women on a set, even when they're young, to go like this and like, oh, she's the star and you know, you're number two or whatever that dynamic looks like. Hillary is a gracious, star quality, classy gal, so kind to her fans and just bubbly and fun, just exactly how you would expect her to be. And I remember reading the script thinking, oh no, this is my opportunity to do something outside of even Stevens and I've been typecasted as the mean girl. And I was kind of nervous. I really appreciated that. The producers decided that they would hear me out about trying to make her more likable. It became more of a story about our friendship. And I really enjoyed that as an actor, a young actor, because I realized I didn't just want to play a one note character. I wanted to play this for real, like she was a three dimensional person and there was a reason probably why she was so mean and she was probably just raised to be this way. And I filmed for several months and I enjoyed a lot of it. I did not enjoy those combat boots. In fact, so basically they put us into like a mini version of boot camp. We didn't sleep somewhere, but we did have to get up really early and we had a drill sergeant, Canadian drill sergeant, so he was very nice. <laughs> but he was extremely effective and he was really great. And he had me and Hillary working side by side and we were learning how to twirl our guns. We were getting hit left and right and I would have bruises on my arms and we'd have to practice in military boots and we'd have to practice marching in formation. That was over time not fun. And now the stories that I hear that my husband who was actually a Marine, that's not anything close to reality at all. But what I found interesting was that we had a lot of military school guys come and they were cadets. So we had real cadet guys mixing with dancers, like these young dancer girls and there was all sorts of romances with each other. It was very much summer camp. I had a huge crush on Sean Ashmore and even went on a couple of dates and he is a total gentleman and I wish him nothing but the best. But I really had a great friendship with Hillary while we were filming. To Hillary's credit, she was so focused and she was so awesome with her team, Troy, who was her dramaturg. I even got to hang out with Haley, who's a sweetheart and her mom, who is basically like, like Kris Jenner, but before Kris Jenner, but she's a boss. It was really cool to meet Hillary because she had been doing so well with Lizzie McGuire. Even Stevens had existed before Lizzie McGuire, a, a whole season before. And so it was really cool to use the synergy of me and her in this dynamic. So we got to meet and we had a blast. We were very different, but we were also really happy to be there. We both really loved the characters. So we would do rehearsals together and we would hang out afterwards. We'd go shopping together. It was a really good time. We were really bonded with the characters. I think both of us were really excited about the opportunity to do something different than what we were doing back in the States. It was Canada. Like, you know, we were really excited to be in another country. It was like, for me, Europe. I, that's what it felt like to me because I had never gone anywhere outside of the country before. So it felt very exotic. I remember watching Much Music, which is like Canada's version of MTV, and listening to new kinds of music that they weren't releasing in the States, and feeling very Euro, and going to different stores that, that didn't exist in the US, and it was, it was cool. It was a really cool moment in time, and I would get per diem. This is something that you get. And my mom was like, you can have your per diem and you can go shopping with it. I was like really jazzed about that. I felt pretty safe. So I was, you know, like I said, I was like 17 or so. So I got to walk anywhere I wanted to go. And I had a really great summer that summer. The filming was a little stressful. We definitely had a lot to coordinate when it came to having that many cadets. But since we were kind of all working with each other for like a month before, everybody kind of had a shorthand with each other. There was one cadet who 
ended up, she was a baton twirler. She was Hillary's double for some of the things. I don't remember what exactly it was, but she was just about the same height and she had blonde hair and she became Hillary's double. Hillary and I had quite a lot of rehearsals when it came to trying to do the hip hop. Now, side note, Hillary is an amazing hip hop dancer. I don't know the last time she danced, but she's actually really, really talented and I am not. I had a ballet background, so even more how different we were when you see us do the, <laughs> whatever that is. She was really good and I just felt more like uptight, you know? And so what I think was fun about that is that I kind of just put that into the character, being this like uptight person. And it was fun because true to life, I was uptight in the beginning of the rehearsals and through and through us like doing this fun choreography, I got to loosen up a little bit. We had so many amazing people cast. Let's talk about all the amazing people in this cast that aren't getting credit. Amy Garcia, who later was in Dexter and all these different things that she's just so good in. Andrea Lewis, who I am in touch with and is a sweetheart, she was great. There's something to be said about the management of one's career. You can go down a lot of different roads. You can choose to be a TV actor. You can choose to be a film actor. I had approached this character as if it was a real film for me. And we even shot on film, we didn't shoot on digital. The process of that is completely different. And so you have a bigger camera, you have just bigger equipment, you have more people, it takes longer. It was a different time. Things have moved to a completely digital era. It's pretty cool. You know, before I started doing Disney stuff, I was really into the New York indie scene. I did a lot of independent films with really amazing actors. I was in a Woody Allen film. I was in a Hal Hartley film. I was set to do indie movies in a dramatic way. When I got cast in Even Stevens, because I was so embedded in the New York film scene, somebody told me, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna do Disney movies and you don't wanna get caught up in that because you're never gonna be respected. That's just, one's interpretation and that is the choice that I took and the road that I went down. One can interpret legacy in many different ways, whether you're gonna be a dramatic actor or whether you're gonna be feature film actor, one can sort of prioritize their legacy and become the face of something like How I Met Your Father. I, I, I think a person can have many different chapters in their career, but what you know them as is something very specific. You know, after it was edited and everything, I was kind of hoping that I'd stay friends and stay close to, to Hillary, but she was so busy with her show and I was too busy with my show. And she started recording music. I remember seeing a demo and I had kind of asked her, I was like, are you gonna sing? And she was like, yeah, yeah, it's just something I'm doing. And look at that, she's a huge pop star. What I find interesting about the interpretation of the relationship between Cadet Kelly and Captain Stone is that there is a narrative that is in the culture right now that people are saying that maybe they were in love, maybe there was like an undercurrent of tension between the two girls. It really helped a lot of girls identify their sexuality. You know, the military has traditionally been strict about all of that stuff. And at the time that it came out, it certainly wasn't talking about that stuff. So this character, Captain Stone, was the sexual awakening for a lot of the girls that felt that way at that age. I had a part in that, that's crazy. Like I never even thought about that. I'm very flattered. So I'd like to think if Captain Stone came back that we could honor this demographic of people that have been forever changed by this character. And we could say that, hey, maybe she's married. She's married to a woman and now she's the principal of the school and there's a, a new girl just like Kelly that's that's come or there's something there. There's definitely another life there for Cadet Kelly, I think as a, a franchise, I think it could come back. You know, I love looking into some of my successes from the past, but generally speaking, some of them have kind of lived and they probably won't come back. Like even Stevens probably won't come back. Kim Possible, who knows? But I do feel strongly that Cadet Kelly could have a second life, who knows what can happen. So in the end, I think what I learned behind the scenes of Cadet Kelly is that just because you have two totally different people with two totally different ways of looking at the world, it doesn't mean you can't get along. <laughs>